Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you today? Continuing on in my quest of trying more cult classic K-beauty brands. Say that five times fast. Today I'm trying out arguably one of the most popular, one of the most biggest, and that's Neogen, which is surprisingly a brand I haven't tried too much from. For my days of working at Sephora, I'm familiar with their cleanser. Their exfoliating pads were actually a very big staple in my skincare routine for a very long time. I actually still have some in my collection. But the one thing from them I haven't tried yet, even though I've seen it a bunch and just have neglected to try it, their sunscreen. Sunscreen. And with that, today I'm trying out the New Den Dermology Daylight Protection Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus PA Plus Plus Plus. Three pluses only. But before we get into it, I'm gonna ask that you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and down below in the comments. Have you tried this? What are your thoughts on it? What was your experience with it? What other cult classic sunscreens do you love and have you tried that I have yet to on my channel just because I forget about a lot of them? Sound off. But also before we get into it, I'm gonna ask that you check my description box for the link to my Patreon account. Again, pretty much every single sunscreen review I do on my channel is funded through my own pocket just because a lot of these brands would be very brave to send me these sunscreens to try on my channel. If you are down to, if it's within your means and you're comfortable to do so, please consider donating to my sunscreen fund. And my Patreon link will be in the description box. So with exploring more brands, Neogen is obviously top tier in the K-beauty world. And this was a sunscreen I'd seen for a very long time, but I just, I hadn't touched it. And again, we sold this at Sephora when I worked there, when we had the entire Neogen line. I just, for some reason, never gravitated towards this specifically, just because I was worried it had a white cast because it had zinc and titanium in it, but we'll get into that in a second. But again, I actually bought this with my own money here in London in this little area called Box Park. This little store called One at Eight that has a cute little K-beauty pop-up. And I saw it there and I was like, you know what? It's been years that I've been putting this one off. Let me just try it finally. The other tea on this. This is a combo sunscreen, which means it features organic, aka chemical, as well as inorganic, aka mineral sunscreen filters combined. So with that, I was like, do I do my mineral sunscreen rubric, my chemical sunscreen rubric? I finally decided to do my chemical sunscreen rubric on it based off a couple of different points. Number one, the percentage of the mineral filters is low. Secondly, the texture of it, honestly, was very elegant. I always try out these sunscreens for a few days and after a couple days I was like you know what this is very much a chemical sunscreen and lastly I will have receipts in the description box but I saw a lot of other deep skin tone creators being like oh this is not ashy this is a very elegant sunscreen I'm not testing it for any white cast in at that point so chemical sunscreen so with that I'll be using my chemical sunscreen testing rubric which is my six F's where I talk about the feel finish filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance. How you'll see the application is I do a quarter teaspoon to cover my face, my ears, and my neck, work it in, let it sit in for at least five minutes before I go on top of it with my makeup. And then after a while, I will reapply the sunscreen on top of the makeup just because I like how chemical, and I guess in this case combo, sunscreens reapply on top of makeup. So the first F is going to be feel. And again, with this F, that was the biggest indication of how I wanted to test it. It's a very lightweight gel lotion texture. You can see I work it into my skin. And at first it's like, oh no, how is this gonna set in? but then it just like melts into the skin. It works in the skin beautifully and it sets down. This has a little bit more of a moisturizing texture to it in my opinion. I find that for myself, I use this in place of moisturizer. I am good, I am moisturized. But I feel like with drier skin types, this will also be moisturizing enough for you just put a moisturizer underneath it. But my skin's nicely moisturized. I feel that texture of having something a little bit more tacky on my skin. I will say this is not sting or irritate around my eye area at all. This doesn't also easily get into my eyes and burn as a result of that. Next is the finish of this. And I would say this finish, because it's a little bit more moisturizing, but again, it's not very emollient. This has a very natural to slightly radiant finish on it. When I looked at myself in the mirror with the lights and everything on it, my skin just looked very nicely, oily skin appropriate, glowy and dewy. There's a specific look I like where I see it when I have lights shining from my side and I have this glow and this radiance on like my forehead and my cheekbones. And I just looking at myself in the mirror for like a good three minutes just like marveling at how nice and supple my skin looked. But it didn't look heavy, it didn't look greasy, I wasn't too emollient again. And when I prepped my skin for the day we filmed, I actually just put it on top of the Micro Essence from Neogen as well just to play around and keep it in the family. I feel like this was very moisturizing enough for my skin. The texture of this makes it really universal so depending on how you prep your skin, this is going to be moisturizing for dry skin types and it's lightweight enough that it works appropriately for oily skin types as well. Next is the filters, and this is where things got a little bit spicy. So again, Neogen was sold in the US, and if you know, US sunscreens need to abide by certain regulations as a result of the FDA. I had to remember this when I was looking at it, because when I looked at Inky Decoder for the deets on the filters and stuff, there was specific ingredients called out as active ingredients, but then other ingredients added in the sunscreen filter section. Getting into that first. So again, this is a combo sunscreen. The active ingredients section, as per the US packaging, you have titanium dioxide at 0.90%, 
7.5%, octanoxate at 7.5%, and then you have zinc oxide at 2.8%. And looking at that, I was like, how does this have SPF 50 plus, PA plus plus plus? Like, where does that come in? And then I looked at the ingredients list, and there's also Tinosorb S and something called amyloxate, which is those two are internationally used sunscreen filters that we don't have approved here in the US yet. And I was like, there we go. I also had to make sure these ingredients are actually included in the US version, but because they're not approved by the FDA in the US, they can't list them as active sunscreen ingredients. So just know that those ingredients exist in both the international and the US version, but in the US, they're not allowed to advertise those as active ingredients. But breaking those down, you have zinc oxide, titanium dioxide offering broad spectrum. Titanium dioxide covers UVB into the shorter wavelength UVA, and zinc oxide covers a pretty good majority of broad spectrum. You have Tinosorb S, which again covers very broad spectrum. It has very high photoprotective value. And then you have the amyloxate, which is covering like titanium dioxide, UVB into shorter wavelength UVA. And then you have octanoxate, which is again, UVB. Along with the percentages I mentioned earlier for the FDA approved ones, looking at the ingredients list and where everything lies, with Tinosorb S, I would argue that's somewhere between a three to 7% range. And then with the amyloxate, it's somewhere between the one and 2% range. But anyways, that was really interesting how they did that with the marketing and how they had to list things. They kept the good filters to keep the SPF protection. They just couldn't list them. So to me, it's very much like what Crave Beauty did, but. I wish more brands would do this, honestly. Again, with all those filters, I just wonder why it's PA3 pluses. Wish I could get more sun protection out of this in that regard, but this is a great everyday sunscreen. If you are in more high exposure, high UV index sun, definitely take other measures besides sunscreen, which you should be doing in the first place, especially with a tire, avoiding direct sun exposure. There's a lot of things that go into actual sun protection besides just sunscreen, but for my everyday needs, PA3 pluses is fine. So that being said, let's look at the formulation and look at the product claims. And again, this formulation has a lot going on for it, but looking at the product claim specifically, it says that it offers light but nourishing hydration from rose and raspberry extracts. So those with dry skin can get an extra boost of hydration after laying over moisturizer and normal to oily skin can use this as a moisturizer with some protection, which I mentioned. It protects all day and wears well under makeup, leaving zero white cast or greasy feeling on the skin, which I can also attest to. Breaking down some ingredient points, you got purslane, which is really popular in K-beauty, raspberry and blueberry extracts, as well as beta-glucan, which some of those offer antioxidant protection. All of those offer anti-inflammatory benefits. You also got glycerin, butylene glycol, and sodium hyaluronate. Really nice humectants for the skin. And then here's the big, here's like a good chunk of things. This is alcohol free. This does have essential oils though. And we'll get into this a little bit later in the video, but kind of breaking down what some of those plant and essential oil extracts are. You got lemon verbena, you got acai extract, orange oil, lemon oil, eucalyptus oil, lavender oil, mei chang oil, yarrow extract, and cedar oil. Which if you're sensitive to them, that is totally understandable. You're sensitive to them. But if you're not, and you don't have any issues of irritation with these kinds of ingredients, I would not worry too much about necessarily. I did a whole video recently with a really good friend of mine, Esther Olu, talking about a lot of ingredients in skincare like essential oils which you should check out. I have that linked up in the card. So now getting to the next F, which is foundation wear. Again, the brand claims this wears great with makeup and I can attest to that. It does in fact. Again, it's nicely moisturizing and nourishing to the skin. It preps the skin nicely for makeup, but it also has this like little bit of a tacky finish, which I mentioned in the feel part of the video that I feel like really grabs on some makeup really well. And so I feel like my makeup, was in place, my makeup was on lock. And when I set my face and everything, I low key looked very airbrushed. I looked really good, nicely matte. My foundation worked nicely throughout the day. But then reapplication. Again, this is a little bit tacky, a little bit more of a stickiness to it. I found that with reapplication with a puff, I had a little bit of lift off. It wasn't the most elegant reapplication. So I definitely will have to play with how I do so. I find using a sponge generally is a little bit better with textures like this. So I might try again with a different sponge as opposed to air cushion. The time that I filmed, the reapplication was not the best experience. And lastly, fragrance. Again, there's no actual fragrance listed in the ingredients list. But as I mentioned, the formulation part of the video, there's a lot of plant and essential oil extracts in this, which lend themselves to a very like citrusy smell. In Puerto Rico and a lot of Latin American countries, we have something called nenuco. And nenuco is like a baby cologne that has a very refreshing citrusy lemony smell to it. And that was the first thing I thought of. It just reminds me so much of nenuco. So if you know what nenuco is, that's what this smells like. And this is, a lot of the extracts are very citrusly derived. They have citronelle in them. So that's where that smell pretty much comes from. It's not really overpowering. I don't find that it lingers for a long time throughout the day, but just know this does smell. There's no fragrance in the ingredients list, but it has all those essential oils which contribute to the smell. So my final thoughts on the Neogen Dermology Daylight Protection Sunscreen. It's a very interesting experience. 
I'm very happy I finally got around to trying it. It actually was very worthwhile. I feel very gratified. I liked the experience overall, the feel of it, the finish of it, the experience was really positive, minus the reapplication. And again, this was brown skin friendly, which was the whole reason I finally decided to do it as a chemical sunscreen review, just because looking at other creators, this left no white cast. This looked great on darker skin tone. So I was like, okay, this passes that test. I don't have to necessarily review it in that capacity. I overall really enjoyed this. This is Roman recommended for sure, hands down. Looking at the price and the overall I'll buy you get out of this. Now this is where things get a little bit hairy. Again, this is the standard 50 mil, 1.65 fluid ounces. The price point on this varies substantially. Again, I'm based here in the UK. Here, I've seen this as low as 15 pound, seen it as high as low 20s. In the US, where I originally was based and where I know a lot of my subscribers are based out of, price point varies from as low as $17, as high as $30 on the Soko Glam and Neogen website. But just know, on websites like Style Korean, Style Vana, Yes, style you can get this on pretty good sale right now on stylevana 20 bucks usd and it's cheaper in pound look at where you're gonna buy this from i will have links down in the description box on retailers i like to buy from overall it's pretty mid-tier especially if you can get it on sale so with that definitely your recommended and so with that that's my final thoughts on the neogen dermology daylight protection sunscreen spf 50 plus p plus 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 make sure you hit the subscribe button notification bell so that you know when i post more skincare sunscreen fancy related content on my channel Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Check that description box for my Patreon link and down in the comment section. Tell me, have you tried this? What are your thoughts on it? And what are some of your other favorite major K-beauty brand sunscreens? Thanks for watching, guys.